Hello, Tarindu Putra. Hello, Marina Aunty. How are you doing? Fine, Aunty. Thank you. Could you do me a favor? Why not? Putta, do you know my land and that small house? The land and the house besides Nimal uncle's house? Of course. I need to measure the land and prepare a drawing. Good. Shall I contact a surveyor? Putta, I thought that you would do it since you are a civil engineer in technology student. Oh, oh, of course, I will do that. Great. How helpful you are. Oh my god, help me. Hello my dear students. Hope you watched my second video on ranging. Today, I am going to explain one of the applications of ranging. That is chain surveying. Now you know Tarindu has a big problem. We'll see how Tarindu will overcome this. How, how does Tarindu, Tarindu do, do that? that? He can use chain surveying. Chain, chain surveying? Of course. But, but still we don't know how to use sophisticated survey instruments. instruments. That's true. But you have to use just two tapes. Only two tapes? No, you need minimum of three ranging rods, a few pegs, a mallet, and at least four people. Out, Out of those, those, we, we only, only know about ranging, ranging rods. rods. That's true. I will introduce them one by one. Let's go to the field and see. Oh, go to the field? Yay! Yes, of course. Here, Here we came. came. Okay, we'll start. Sir, why is called chain surveying though we use tapes? Good question. Early days we used chains instead of tapes. Still we can use them, but all of them have been damaged. Sir, Sir please, please show us some, show of, those some of those This is known as a metric chain. It consists of galvanized mild steel wire of 4 mm diameter known as link. These chains are available in 20 meters and 30 meters length. A 20 meters chain has 100 links each of 20 centimeters. A 30 meter chain has 150 links. Interesting, is it just like my puppy's chain? <laughs> this is known as engineer's chain. It is a 100 feet chain of 100 links each of 1 foot. I think they are much better than tapes. We can't say like that. There are pros and cons of both chains and tapes. Anyway, there are different types of chains other than above. We'll discuss it later. Remember, Tarindu is waiting for us. Not, Not only Tarindu, but, but also, also Auntie Marina. Marina. <laughs> okay, let's say you need to measure this land and trace existing features of it. Later, you need to put all the collected details into a drawing to present it. All this process is known as detail survey. In this drawing, you are going to show major details like building edges, road edges, boundaries, and etc. Now tell me the details you need to show by the drawing. House edges, the fence, the, the trees. trees the gate good apart from those you need to trace all the other permanent structures showing those kind of details in a drawing is called a detailed drawing so what is the definition of chain surveying good question since now you know what detail survey is now I can explain it chain survey is the simplest form of detail survey so shall we start? Okay, first you have to go around the house and the land and draw your own helicopter view of the land. Okay, okay let's, let's go. go.
Okay, while students are drawing the helicopter view of the land and features, we'll see the actual helicopter view. This is the actual helicopter view. Okay, we'll see what our students have drawn. Yes, please. Not bad. Here it is. Nice try. Sir, can't we give this kind of drawing to Auntie Marina? No, we can't. You drew just a sketch. It is out of proportions. We'll compare them with actual plan. Our sketches, sketches are useless. useless. What, what a waste, waste of time. time. Don't be upset. My drawing was drawn after doing chain serving. Your ones were drawn just by walking around the land. Your sketches are useful to determine the placement of chain lines that should be used to collect the details. Yay! Our sketches, our sketches are, are useful. useful. Of course. It's known as prospection diagram. Prospection, prospection diagram? Of course. Remember, you have to mark the north in your sketches. It's very important to orient the diagram. Orient, orient the, the diagram? diagram? As a practice, when we hold a drawing, we turn the north side up. Therefore, it is must to mark north before you start the drawing. Then you don't need to hold the drawing upside down to read it. Further, it will help to naming the features. Letters will be shown in correct side. Let's take Kogulan's corrected prospection diagram. I will mark an example line in that diagram to teach you some measurement techniques. Let's denote two ends of the line as point A and B. We have to mark points A and B on the ground using two pegs with the help of a mallet or a steel hammer. Please show us pegs and the mallet. Pegs are pieces of wood of different heights and with cross sections of 12.5 into 12.5 meter or 50 into 50 mm with a pointed end. Pegs are used to be driven into the ground with the mallet to indicate a location on the ground. Mallet is a wooden hammer which is used to drive wooden pegs into the ground. Further we need two tapes as well. We have two 5 meter tapes. 5 meter tapes are not enough. We have to measure more than 5 meter lengths. We can use a 50 meter or 100 meter steel tape to measure the chain line and a 30 meter linen tape to take other measurements from the chain line. Why do we need to use steel tape for the chain lines? Can't we use linen tape for chain lines as well? Chain lines are very long lines. Therefore, sagging of the tape due to self weight is very high. Then we need to pull the tape from sides to reduce the sagging. If we use a linen tape, it will stretch and elongate very much than the steel tape. Hence, the accuracy of the chain line is low of linen tapes compared to steel tapes. Okay, we'll see how to take measurements from the chain line. Good! After you have laid the steel tape between A and B, you can get measurements to corners of the house. Getting perpendicular measurements to the tape is easy. Those measurements are called perpendicular offsets. Once you get two offsets to this building, it is enough. Then you can get one dimension of the building as shown in the diagram. Using those measurements, we can draw the house referred to AB line.
In a drawing sheet, you can draw a b line to scale. You can mark 1 meter in the ground by 1 centimeter in the drawing. Then the scale is 1 is to 100. Then using set squares, you can mark offsets. Finally, you can mark the building edge in the drawing. Then using a set square, you can draw the other edge of the house based on the dimension taken early. Since the building in this example is rectangular, you can complete the building without other measurements. Now you can take offsets to trees around roads and etc. If the structure is a curve, you need to take offsets at close intervals. According to Kogulan's figure, you can have a few perpendicular offsets to trace the curvature like this. We can mark all these offsets in the drawing sheet as follows. Similar to the way you mark the building edge in the drawing, you can mark the trees and the curve. how the measurements are taken. Sir, do we use a giant set square to take the offset readings? No! <laughs> but your concept is okay. We can make a giant set square using a tape. We call it 345 meter. 345 meter? Of course. It's the application of Pythagoras theorem. We'll see. Take a tape and mark 3 meter, 4 meter and 5 meter lengths in order and stretch the tape from those points to form a right angle triangle. Now you can move this right angle triangle along the chain line until you range the object that you need to get perpendicular offset measurement. Then after ranging you can measure the length to the tree. By ranging using 345 meter, we can obtain the perpendicular offset length. Oh, what a method! But it is a bit long process. Isn't there any easy method? Why not? Swinging the tape over the chain line pivoted from the object is the easiest method. Wow! Please show us how it is done. Let's take another example. We can take the perpendicular offset to the tree by swinging the tape above the tree. Then the least tape measurement over the chain line gives the perpendicular offset. The tape indicates the least measurement of 9 meter by 2 meter of the chain length. Oh, that's very easy. I like that method. Yes, but it's not recommended to take perpendicular offsets by more than the length of 10 meter. Why? What is the reason? When we are getting perpendicular offsets more than 10 meter, the variation of the length shown while swinging the tape over the chain line is less. Then it is difficult to find the exact chain length for the particular offset. So, what is the solution? So we can use oblique offsets. Oblique offsets? Of course, I will show you how to do that. Here we take one measurement from one chain length and another measurement from another chain length. The tree has 17 meter oblique offset by 4 meter of chain length and 13 meter oblique offset by 14 meter chain length. Further, when there are obstacles to get the perpendicular offsets, you can go for oblique offsets. Now we'll see how to mark oblique offsets in a drawing. You can measure 17 cm by a compass according to the scale 1 is to 100 to mark the 17 meter offset. 
Next you can draw an arc from 4 cm point of the chain line as drawn in the figure. Then you can measure 13 cm by the compass according to the scale 1 is to 100 to mark the 13 meter offset. Now you can draw an arc from 14 cm point of the chain line as drawn in the figure. Now you can mark the tree at the intersecting point. Oh, interesting. I like that method. Okay, now you know how to take measurements referred to a chain line. Of course, we learned a lot. Sir, this may be a foolish question. What happens if somebody pulls out one of our ground pegs? Good question. How did I miss this? Oh. Sir, should we then repeat the measurements again? If you hadn't taken precautions, you have to repeat. But if you can find the exact place where the peg goes, then no problem. What are the precautions? You must take tie measurements to all the pegs before commence the work. Tie measurements? Of course, you should take tie measurements to all pegs soon after you draw them to the ground. Sir, please teach us. Tie measurements are the measurement taken from permanent structures to the pegs as shown. Taking three measurements is enough to locate the point. If the peg is missing, similar to the way we mark the oblique offsets in the drawing, we can draw a peg exactly at the place. Thank you for explaining. Not at all. Now we'll see how to play chain lines covering the entire land. I thought one line is enough. No, one line is real enough. We need to trace boundaries and other features. Okay, shall we learn that as well? First we'll see the prospection diagram of Kogulan and determine the lines to be laid. We need a chain line to cover the details of left side fence of the land. Similarly, other three sides should have separate chain lines. To cover the details of the middle of the land, it is better to put a chain line along the diagonal direction as well. And that chain line will be the longest line and it should be located first. We we'll locate the longest chain line first. It is called as baseline. Next we can put other chain lines. All the endpoints A, B, C and D are known as main stations. In this plan, we don't have much details to trace, but if you had much details, you could have put tie lines between two chain lines to trace missing details. Those stations are called tie stations or subsidiary stations. Apart from all these chain lines, we have another one called check line. Normally, check line is similar to tie line but the difference is we do not collect details referred to the check lines. The main purpose of the check line is checking the accuracy of the field work at the drawing office. That's all about chain lines. Yes, we learned chain survey. It's not done yet. We need to take the bearing from north to the baseline. Otherwise, we cannot orient the drawing as I explained earlier. 
When you plot the drawing, first you have to mark the baseline with respect to north. Next, you can measure the length of AD line to a compass. According to the scale of the drawing, mark an arc. Then similarly measure the BD length to the compass and draw an arc to cut the arc drawn from A. Now you can mark the main station D. Similarly, you can mark the main station C as well. Now you can join all the main stations and draw the chain lines. Next, you need to mark the chain edges of the check line in the drawing. Then you can measure the length of the check line in the drawing. If the field length of the check line is 11 meters, then the drawing length should be 11 centimeters. But here the check line length is 10 centimeters. Then we have to go back to the field and check all the measurements. If the field length of the check line is 10 meters, the check line of the drawing should indicate 10 centimeters. Then we can start marking the features of the drawing. Thank, Thank you, you sir for, for explaining, explaining all these. these. You're welcome. Okay, we'll see how to mark the chain lines at the drawing office tomorrow. Okay, okay sir. sir. Now you can start all the measurement works. We'll, we'll go. go. Okay students, we learned a lot today. Tell me one by one what you learned today. Detail survey. Chain survey. Prospection diagram. Perpendicular offsets. Oblique offsets. 345 method. Swinging the tape. Tie measurements. Baseline. Main station, station tie, tie line, line, tie station, check line, pegs, pegs mallet, mallet and tapes. Good, you have learnt a lot. Now time you can start Marina Auntie's work. <laughs> okay students, let's go. Students, please come to the drawing hall. I'm ready to survey your land. Tomorrow I will come with my friends. Thank you, Puta. I'm waiting for you. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching this video. Coming up next is leveling part one.